Hi, it's Darnell with Way Oven Recipes, and today I'm going to be cooking up a whole three pound salmon filet in the Power Smokeless Grill XL, the 1500 watt version. So, we're going to see how this Power Smokeless Grill does cooking up a big salmon filet right now. All right, so we've got our three pound salmon filet here, some other ingredients that I'll be using. I've got a lemon I've cut in half, I've got some freshly ground, well, I'll be freshly grinding some black pepper, got some applewood smoked sea salt well as some Obey seasoning. I do have the iGrill 2 temperature probe there that I'll be using to measure the meat temperature while cooking. But to start, we're going to turn the Power Smokeless Grill on and I'm going to up its temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's at 350. And so just so that I don't forget later, I'm going to turn the fan on now. And we'll just let the fan run while we're getting things together here. And so to basically prepare the salmon filet, since it's so long, you know, it's really going to be longer when you consider the rest of it. It might be longer, it might not be. I thought it might be longer than the grill plate and that I would probably have to cut it to fit it in, but I'm thinking that at the size that it's at, it'll probably fit. So I'm not going to try and cut it, I'm going to try and leave it whole and then just try and uh, basically you know get it on their hole and cook it up so we're just going to prep the whole filet instead of trying to slice it in half so what i'm going to do here i'm just kind of laying it out just a little bit to get it a little flatter here and i'm just going to take my lemon i'm going to squeeze some lemon on there so squeeze some lemon over on this side Get it covered good with some lemon juice on this side. I'm going to, I guess I'll grill it on, well I'm going to grill it on this, with this other side down. I'm going to get some lemon juice on this opposite side also. So get some lemon juice on this other side as well. Usually these cinnamon fillets are so long you have to cut them to get them to fit onto like one of these plates or something but this one I guess it's you know just able to make it as far as its size getting some of these lemon seeds off of here and what I'm going to do now that I've got it on this side that I'm going to grill it on I'm going to season this side I'm going to go ahead and put some of my seasonings my obey I'm going to start with that I'm not going to put a lot of obey on it just a touch of obey just to give it a touch of that spice from the obey seasoning but when you're dealing with seafood, I mean, it's not a question of if you're going to use Obey. It's just a question of how much Obey you personally want to use. And then you can use some of your other seasonings too. Like this applewood smoked sea salt. I'm going to sprinkle some of that all over here. Not too much. We don't want to salt it up too much. And then get some of my black pepper. And sprinkle this on here. Sorry this uh, pepper grinder makes a little bit of noise. But uh, there's nothing like crusty cracked black pepper when it comes to the flavor. There's nothing like the flavor of crusty cracked black pepper. So I'm going to flip things over here. Get things on this other side. I'm going to try and get some of these lemon seeds off of here that I see. Just get the salmon fillet pulled out just a little more like that. I'm then going to, I'm going to get some more, make sure I got some more lemon juice on it, just because it's nice to have. So sprinkle some more oil on this side here, get that nice and covered, we'll exhaust some more of this nice lemon juice on it. Alright, I'm going to get those seeds out the way, and now I'm going to get some more of this obey and such on there, just a touch of this obey that covered on there like so and a little bit more will be on there Let's see if I can get a little more there we go that's good some good seasoning on there get a little more of the salt on there and you can of course season your salmon up however you like this is how I like to do mine and get some pepper on it. 
So we've got it basically seasoned up now with all the seasonings that we want. So with, with that, you know, basically going to let that continue to heat for a while. I mean, it hasn't even reached the target temp yet. It hasn't gone solid. But even after it goes solid, I'm going to give it, you know, maybe another five minutes or so to set at 350. And there's one thing in there that I forgot to mention. You've probably want, been wondering what that is on top of the grill plate. Inside of the Power XL Smokeless Grill, I've got a Copper Chef grill bed or grill pad. And that's just kind of like a thin layer that you can put on top of a grill pad so that stuff like the salmon, I don't have to worry about it. Even though it's a non-stick surface, I don't have to worry about it sticking at all on that grill plate because this uh, this pad that's on there is really non-stick. I mean, the salmon or anything will raise right off of it with no problem. So I've got that in there to cover the grill grate so that nothing will stick at all from the salmon when I put it on and cook it. And so it should cook up really nice. So just gonna let things continue to you know warm up there since it's already reached 350. And then I'll bring you on back in a moment and we'll get the salmon on in there. All right, things have had about five minutes just to sit there at 350 for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and get the hot lid off. And actually it's not too hot to have just touched it there with just the rubber glove hand. So good thing about that. But you should use pot holders when you touch that lid. So now I'm going to take my salmon filet and just set it down. It's pretty much fitting. I mean it's like I'm kind of squinching it just a little to make sure that it fully fits. I'm just kind of squinching it up just a little but it pretty much fits all together whole. So that's pretty good. I mean it does fit all together whole. I just kind of squinched it up just a little bit. But it fits. I didn't think it would all together like that in one shot but that's pretty impressive. Now I'm just getting this meat probe down far deep into the meat trying to get a good uh, insertion there. So we see that the meat now is reading about well, about 46 degrees on the iGrill 2 uh, meat probe. And so I'm going to just kind of get that lid straightened up. Now I'll go ahead and let that cook for a while. We'll see you know, how long it takes for it to finish cooking. Alright, it looks like we're getting close to done, and so, you know, I don't have the exact time, I'll probably, you know, I'll put that into the video later, but it's been, you know, over 30 minutes, it's been like maybe 33 minutes to get it to, it was almost 145, and I'm pretty confident my probe is on point given the time that it's taken. And so, you know, I'll get it out of here as soon as it hits uh, even 145. You know, I could have flipped it, but I really didn't want to flip it. It is at 145 now, but I didn't want to flip it. I wanted to just let it roll as is and see how things would go. And turn power off. I'm going to get the lid off of here. I'm going to get that uh, meat probe out while I'm at it. Now that we have that out of the way, got to get the salmon fillet off and onto my cutting board. I'm just going to slide it over just a touch so that I can slide my cutting board over just a little bit. And I've got my pizza peel, my big outdoor grill pizza peel, to try and get under the salmon. I just want to keep it whole and try and get it off. So just getting the peel up under there. All right, and there we have it, our full salmon filet. Thank the Lord I got it off in one piece because I just wanted to see it on my cutting board whole in one piece, and there we have it. So let me get this lid. This lid's not too hot, to be 
handle's not too hot, I guess, because I didn't run the grill too hot. But there we have it now. All right, so I'm just going to slide the grill over a little more out of the way, so I have room for a plate here. And now I'm just going to, I'll just cut it down the middle. Give it a slice right down the middle. And just cut a piece off right down the middle here. We'll just get some of this off out of the middle. And you can see the meat in there is well done, you know, fully cooked. That's the way I like it. So I'm just going to plate some of that. And so with that, I'm going to move the camera and we'll do our taste test. All right, so here's our salmon filet, fully cooked up in a smokeless grill with no smoke. So I'm trying to get a piece off of here. It's kind of flaky. So here we go. Okay, the salmon tastes good, tastes really good. You know, some of you, I don't know if you've seen my medley skillet video where I did a full brine of a salmon, but you can do a full brine of a salmon before you cook it. And if you do like a full brine of it, you don't get that white stuff on top of it like you saw in this one. And also that brine kind of seeps the flavor in real deep. So that's really nice too. This one came out good though. It tastes good. Smoke the grill did its job. The grill mat worked perfectly. I was able to, as you saw, lift it right off of there with no trouble at all. And I like that. I definitely like that this XL size, this Power Smokeless Grill XL size, was able to hold that whole salmon filet. The regular size one, you know, probably can't hold that whole salmon filet like that. That's the way it is. But in the video description, you can find a link to my Amazon shop, and there you can find all the cooking tools that you saw me use in this video, except this XL size cooker. You can probably just find like the regular size cooker. I don't know if they have the XL on Amazon or not, but if they do, I'll put that into the shop as well. But basically all these other tools like the pizza pill, I'll try and make sure that's in there. Also the eye grill too. Those things will be in there. If the pizza peel is not in there, then, you know, sorry, but I'll put another pizza peel in that'll be comparable to this one. But anyway, you can get all that good stuff help this channel. And also, you can always find this recipe and others on my blog at superwaveovenrecipes.com. I also have the recipe down in the video description for you and a link directly to it if you want to print it. And also, you can always come to this YouTube channel by going to waveovenrecipes.com on Twitter and Instagram at waveovenrecipes as well. And also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, and good eating.